welcome to episode two of Diving In, Exploring Women in STEM. I'm your host, Amber Sparks, and I'm here today with our special guest, Joanna Smart. She's a Rolex dive scholar. And Joanna, tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name's Joanna. I'm from Tasmania in Australia, and I'm the 2019 Australasian Rolex Scholar of the Our World Underwater Scholarship Society. Awesome. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but... <laughs> So cool. So what are you doing with the scholarship? What has it enabled you to do? So the Rolex scholarship is an opportunity given to young people who work in the diving industry or have aspire for careers in marine science or anything underwater basically. Um, and it gives three lucky people over, all over the world each year the opportunity. Only three people? Three people. Oh my yeah, gosh. three people. One from Australasia, one from Europe and one from North America. Wow. And it gives them the opportunity to basically travel all over the globe scuba diving in different locations, working with different companies, undertaking training, um, all in the hopes of furthering their careers in the marine environment. That's amazing. This is like the dream job. So what did yeah. you do with your scholarship? <laughs> what, it, what have you done with it? So I've done a whole variety of different things. Um, the focus of my scholarship year has been to work with different businesses, different organizations, all who are at the forefront of innovation in the marine environment. So tell me a little bit more about your background and how you ended up here. I started out snorkeling in Tasmania's kelp forests um, and that grew into a passion for diving. Um, and I was really excited about scuba diving all throughout high school. So the natural progression of that was when I got to university was to study marine biology and marine science. I ended up working as a research assistant for various different lab groups before finally getting a job as an environmental consultant. And my experiences as an environmental consultant really shaped where I am today um, because I started working with the less glamorous side of marine science. So we did a lot of work with aquaculture um, and with sewage treatment plants and wastewater. Part of my background is in seaweed physiology. So I spent a lot of time researching seaweeds, um, researching how they function, how they uptake certain chemicals from the environment and what they do. So as part of that, I've been trying to tie into my scholarship year sort of a global exploration of the world's seaweeds. Through that, I've been able to experience seaweed environments all over the globe. Um, and a big part of that was I got to go seaweed farming in the Faroe Islands. Where are the Faroe Islands? So the Faroe Islands are about halfway between Norway and Iceland. So they're right up oh. in the North Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> So they have these big fjords and there's a company there called Ocean Rainforest that are having a really innovative approach to marine farming. Um, they're looking at the seaweed farming process from start to finish. So they culture their own stocks, baby seaweeds are called gametophytes um, and they keep them in these big jars and then they seed them onto lines, grow them out, cut them off and um, process them. What does traveling around the world with dive gear look like? It looks like me struggling with a lot of luggage. Yeah. Um, so I generally have two bags that weigh about 23 kilos each. Um, I also have a backpack full of camera gear that weighs about 16 kilos. So I've become an expert at sneaking that onto planes without getting charged excess baggage. Um, and I travel with a full dive setup. So I have dry suit, wet suit, um, BCD, regulators, fins, all of that sort of stuff, and I also travel with a full camera setup. So the scholarship has enabled me to experience and see all of these things all over the world that I never would have had the chance to do before. Um, I've been on assignment with National Geographic. That was a huge dream of mine. I have worked with seaweed farms far in the North Sea. I've been in underwater biospheres in Italy. Um, it's given me, it's in many ways, it's shrunk my world. Everything seems a lot closer now and everything seems a lot more achievable wow. than it did before. Has the scholarship changed your opinion of kelp at all? Um, I think 
more than anything, it's broadened my perspective to how many different kelp environments there are. I mean, we have from the, you know, kelp forests of California to the big bull kelp in Scotland. It's, um, it's a real variety of environments and I think it's so much more than just lumping it in as kelp. You know, we talk about coral reefs as their own independent source, but most people don't know that the whole southern coastline of Australia is a kelp forest. It's the Great Southern Reef, and the Great Southern Reef has been just as affected by climate change as has the Great Barrier, but nobody talks about it because kelp isn't that glamorous. There aren't any turtles in kelp, it's slimy, most people freak out when a piece of kelp touches their foot at the beach. So I think it's, it's been the sort of silent sufferer in our ocean crisis, and I think that it's time to bring our attention to kelp. Thank you for watching episode two of Diving In, Exploring Women in STEM. If you like this episode and want to see more, give our channel a follow, and you can also find us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at the Blue Latitudes Foundation.